We're going to learn how to create connections to QuickBooks online reports using Excel's Power Query. Hello, it's Steve Chase here at Sequential Solutions, and let's jump right in. So first off, uh, the purpose of this video is to create a pivot table in Excel that is constantly being updated and refreshed after QuickBooks Online data refreshes. The example specifically that we're going to work with is transaction by vendor report, year to date, end result is going to end up with a pivot table with slicers so we can see what kind of checks are going out uh, the picture here. Okay, first step, let's go to QuickBooks Online, sample company, um, and run that report. So good reports. Transaction list by vendor. And then we're gonna select this year to date. So that way every time the report has uh, been updated, it's always based on today's date there. I'm going to click customize, change columns. Cool thing about QBO reports is you can show last modified, who it was modified by, um, and there's just a variety of different different options in here to, to manage and so forth. All right, so run report. Okay, at this point, let's now begin by um, saving this. So I'll just type year to date, save, and then we want to export that to Microsoft Excel. Mm -hmm. Oops. All right. So here, let's take a look at um, coming up with a good name here. So I'll just call it YTD Vendor Report from QBO. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just save it to the desktop. All right. Now, take a look at this report here we're working with. 107 rows of data. Okay. All right. And we're going to have a table from QBO here. And we'd like that to come in right here on A3. All right. So the first step that we do is we go to data tab in Excel. And I'm um, going to select this get data from file. Choose the proper connection, in our case is a workbook. That would be it right there. Import. This is going to load the Power Query. And in the Power Query, we're going to select the worksheet. Here's our information, but it's not quite right. In other words, we need to have Bob's Burger Joint listed each record next each date because this doesn't show us much with the pivot table we'll, we'll need to clean this up here so we're going to click on transform data if you are satisfied with how this looked right here then you could just click load to say b3 boom and it would go right there but we're going to click transform all right so let me maximize that now what's going to happen is during the transformation, it's going to give us some default transformations here. Then it's up to us to continue it on. All right, so my, my uh, Excel spreadsheet's always going to come in with the first three rows not necessary. Our header row is actually on the fourth row. And that's just going to be the default of QBO reports coming in for this type of report. So we're going to remove the first three rows. You click Remove Rows remove top rows, and then say three here. Okay, pretty cool. All right, now the next thing we wanna do is we want to promote the headers. You can see right now row one is our header row. 
So we'll want to um, click a button that says use first row as headers. There we go, nice. And you can see now that we have headers, you can see the data types. You can see this is a date field. This is text, text. Um, here's amount, we can switch that to currency. Yeah, we're gonna replace the current. Yep, and that's now gonna have um, currency applied to it here. All right, um, let's scroll down to the very last row. Okay, um, and go ahead and discover that the very first row is the timestamp in Excel. It kind of just throws that in there. So we don't need that last row. So I'm going to click on remove bottom rows and the last ones because uh, QBO reports always gives you the timestamp when the report was ran. So okay. Okay, so that's been taken care of here. Now the other thing about the report is check this out. All these blank rows are right above the headers of each group. So we don't want those. So right now we've got uh, 101 rows. We're gonna click to delete blank rows. So remove rows, then it's gonna be remove blank rows. All right, it just, just does it, okay? Meanwhile, on the right-hand side under our applied steps, it's showing us exactly what it is. So we, if we make a mistake during the transformation, you can hit the X button to take it out and it will, it will go back out there, so. All right, the next step I'm gonna share with you is how do we get the vendor names, specifically, let's rename that. I can go into the column name and just type vendor name here. And so over here, re renamed columns, okay. If you can see all the way towards the bottom here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to have the vendor names spill into, into these right below it. So when, with the select, select the column that you wanna do that with to transform there's a little guy right here that says fill. This is a huge time saver if you've got to type in, use typing in blanks underneath this, of the field's name. Sometimes reports will give you that. So down or up, and just be careful which way you're going. So in our case, we want to spill down, right? Bob's Burger Joint is going to take over two, three, and four. And then Books by Bessie will be six, seven, eight. So let's watch what happens here. Fill down. Wow. All right, so there's the filled down. Um, once I messed up and I, I selected fill up and it, it went the opposite, it pushed everything up. So everything was off big time. It was, everything was off by a vendor. So over on the right hand side, you'd see, it's nice that you can see what you just selected there and, and just be careful on that, okay? Okay, so this is looking great. Um, I'm gonna now go home. If I were to select close and load, that would create a new spreadsheet. If I were to say close and load two, it's gonna ask me what, where do I wanna put it? Where do I want the top left cell of the table? Most likely it's gonna be a table. So I'll select existing worksheet B3. If I was gonna play with the data model, I might check that. That uh, would lead into multiple tables you can analyze in a pivot table. So that, that would be powerful there. But, Right now, we're just gonna click OK. All right, and it tells us that 80 rows were loaded right there. That is awesome. All right, let's save this file. And I'll just call it book one QBO to Excel vendor payments. And I just need to place it in the desktop. All right. Okay, let's create a pivot table. So summarize the pivot table on a new worksheet, it's fine. So vendor name in the rows, 
the amount here and then a slicer on the type and we want to look at checks so there, those are our checks right there also want to look at bill payment checks oh, um, in order to see both at the same time you can drag transaction type in the columns there we go there we go Okay, save. All right, so check it out. Um, the next time we look at this report, we're gonna go write a check um, to the insurance agency. Okay, so let's begin. Let's go back to QuickBooks. And click check. Then we're gonna select insurance uh, looks like actually we have a bill to pay so let's add that bill here okay checking and we'll just say it was check number 155 today save and close okay so very good here so now um while we're at it let's create a new vendor Okay, new vendor, we're just gonna write check number 159. Let's put it on June 1st and it will be for, we'll just say advertising. Okay. There we go. Select the save and close. All right, so now our next process is we have to change the data source. We have to rerun this report. Now, normally we'd be up to date, but I'm just gonna extend it to June 1st because I know we have a future one here, but having that year to date would automatically do that, assuming that, okay. Export to Excel. Then this has to be saved exactly the same name on top. So remember where it was at? It was, uh, which one? It was this one right here. I need to make sure I have that right. Actually, no, it's year to date. That's it. Year to date vendor report from QBO. Okay. After I do that, it's going to warn me. Do, yes, I'm going to replace on top of that. Okay. So now we want the Power Query getting transformed to delete the first um, four rows here. And then we want it to delete these blank rows here, every blank row we want to delete, and then the, see the timestamp right here, we want to delete that last row that doesn't need to go in there either. So, all right, so I, I'm just gonna push it here. Okay, so now what we've gotta do is we've gotta refresh the table. So right now, if I were to look for insurance, uh, it's not here, so. How do I do that? One way is with a right click refresh. The other way is right click on the list here and then do a refresh here. Okay. Wow, okay. So it, it's looking really good right there. Here's our alpha mega right there. So then how do we get, see that in the pivot table? Um, well, you'd have to right click on the, the pivot table to refresh it. And then it should come in here. Also, if you go to the data tab and hit refresh all, everything updates. The power query, the pivot table, the data set underlining it. Okay. 
you might be wondering, okay, where's alpha omega? Well, remember um, that, let's see, where is alpha omega? Alpha omega should be in here, right? All right, click refresh. Oh, right here. There it is right there. Right there it is. Perfect, perfect. So that's the one that we did. We also did the insurance and we added to the bill. So I'm gonna double click on the insurance number, bill check. And you can see how we have the data came in here and then back to the pivot table by double click here. Be awesome. Last thing I want to sh share with you is that um, in the pivot table itself, a great way to have it, but broken down by months. So if I go to the analyze and do insert timeline, I might have the date and then I can select the month. Yeah. So just right now, we only got one in June. So this is a great way. If I was really specific, I could go, even go by days and I could just do something like that. Populate it and so forth. So awesome. So that is our demo, how to take data from QuickBooks Online Reports, send it to Excel, and have the data connections being reported all the time here so thanks for watching guys if you if you'd like to connect with me outside of youtube um, just feel free to send me an email and see if we can connect and work together and help you get that perfect report out of your quickbooks online to microsoft excel just send me an email at steve chase at sequentia solutions.com thanks for watching